Last time on Out Chasing Stars, we set off from Brazil on what would end up being the final sail of our circumnavigation. The passage didn't get off to the smoothest start, with lots of squalls and light winds as we made our way through the doldrums. We had to use all the tricks we knew to keep Starry Horizon sailing, and it paid off when we finally found those consistent trade winds. The bows were now pointed towards the Caribbean, but a global pandemic soon threw a massive wrench in our plans. What's going on in this situation room here, babe? Oh my goodness. So, uh, while we were at sea, my sister, Julie, handles our Facebook page for us. So we send her pictures, she posts them, um, sends us a comment so we can kind of stay connected to the world. And apparently the world is going crazy. So Everybody's worried about us getting coronavirus. I know, so this, this video is going to be so late for this whole happening, but right now, like coronavirus is apparently spreading throughout the world like crazy. Uh, we knew that like the U.S. was starting to have some issues when we left Brazil about five days ago, but uh, people are starting to comment on our Facebook page that the Caribbean is starting to shut down. Like some countries are restricting entries for yachts, and that's a problem because we're going to the Caribbean like right now. Uh, and so we're not 100% sure if we can still get into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've got our circumnavigation party planned for St. Lucia. Don't know if we can get in there. There's just there's a lot of kind of rumor and hearsay at the moment, so we're trying to work the email as best we can to figure out like who has actual facts for where we can go. This is just it's it's really crazy because we're so used to going on a passage and knowing where we're going to go, and now we don't, and that's really not what we were expecting for the end of our long leg of a circumnavigation. So it's just it's very weird and, and a little unsettling at the moment. <laughs> We felt a bit helpless given the uncertainty of the situation. The only thing we could do was try to get to the Caribbean as fast as we possibly could. Yesterday was a very fast day of sailing. We did 190 nautical miles in 24 hours. That's a little over 7.9 knot average, and that's pretty damn good for Starry Horizons. Not not quite a record for us. We've done over 200 several times, but still, it's faster than we were going in the doldrums and feels pretty damn good. Yeah, the winds definitely picked up throughout the day yesterday. We started out with uh, Main and Screecher. The winds picked up a bit. We had to roll the Screecher in. Kept picking up. We had to reef the sails. Kept picking up. But we actually ended up with two reefs before the day was out, so uh, definitely was picking up quite a bit. Uh, in conjunction with that, the waves, although they are aft of the beam, are only just barely aft of the beam. So we've been getting rocked side to side pretty good, taking some uh, waves slapping up against the side of the hull, bouncing up and over. Glad we've got this enclosure up here, but um, we are we're sailing, and man, it feels good, pointed in the right direction. The Caribbean's in front of us. I like it. With the winds dropping, that meant there was some work to do to shake out a reef. I put on my official work gear and got to it.
for Shook Out, and away we go! Got another situation room update. Uh, my sister posted on Facebook for us requesting anyone who's in the Caribbean to contact us and let us know some actual facts of what's happening there. And the sailing community really came through for us. So we've got a list of countries that are closed and I'm just absolutely flabbergasted by this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this out. Um, Trinidad, closed. St. Lucia, closing within the next day. Curacao, closed. BVI's, closed. Um, Dutch St. Martin, Seba, Stacia, closed. I think the only countries that are still letting people in are, are the destination we've been planning on going to, St. Vincent the Grenadines, Dominica, sounds like there's no restrictions, uh, Grenada has clearing in and out only in specific ports, and Antigua has clearing in and out only in one port now. And it sounds like you have to give advance notice to arrive into Antigua. This is just wild. Like, we had all these countries were open when we left Brazil, and now it's just changing so incredibly fast. So, we're, we've got a couple people who mentioned to us that provisioning in St. Vincent and the Grenadines isn't great in the best of times, and so we're a little worried about if we clear in there and get stuck, how is provisioning going to be in the middle of a panic? So we've got some discussion to do, I think. We've got three options we're considering. One, keep going to SVG, which is not a super great option, even though the islands are still open, but we are basically considering the fact that wherever we go, we might get stuck there for a while. SVG is not a great place for that because it's not as populated and as developed and it doesn't have the infrastructure that some of the other islands have. That's choice number one. Choice number two is we pick a different Caribbean island, and based on the list, the best two options are Granada or Antigua. And both we've been to before, we know that they're pretty well developed, and that there's stuff going on, there's people there. We have a friend in Antigua, Tom, so we're going to send him an email, and he's going to hopefully be able to tell us what it's like on the street. Um, and either of those places, I think we would be okay provisioning and being there for a few months if we have to. If we get stuck, yeah. yeah. And then choice number three is head to the States. And we need to check the weather forecast and see if that's even a possibility, but that would tack on like eight to ten days of sailing. Yeah, we weren't really planning on that when we left Brazil, were we? We're not. So, we do have enough food to make it. <laughs> We would be eating instant soup and canned tuna, which are not David's favorite things. Num, 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 num. Um, but we have been really good about our diesel usage, we have a lot of food, and we need to get to the States eventually. That would be really the best case scenario is to get to the States. Yeah. So, it's unfortunate, um, but we're going to send some emails out to people that we know or agents to make sure that we can get into Granada or Antigua, although I think we lean towards Antigua because it's closer to the, to the United States. Um, of course, our families would like us to go to the States. So, yeah. um, but we don't even know if we can get in there. They may be closing that down too. We don't know if we can get too, in the States so. either. We're going to have some of our family look into it for us. So That's the scenario right now. <laughs> All right, so still we a gotta, bit more information needed before we make some decisions, huh? We gotta collect some more information and determine what is the best route for us not to get coronavirus. I like the sound of that. No viruses on this boat, please. I'm not really worried about us getting sick and dying from coronavirus, but we will get stuck wherever we go, it sounds like. Yeah. So. All right, well, let's get back to work. Back to work. Back to the grind. It's up on deck this morning for my uh, daily rounds, checking the rigging, everything like that. 
I found something that um, is, is pretty wild, something we've never actually had before. There are, I think, in total, 10 flying fish that ended up on the deck overnight. We've got eight of them up here on the trampoline. Two of them were back on the back step that I already threw overboard. But that is pretty wild. We have never had that many in one night. Starry Horizons has a very high freeboard. It must have been a massive school that we went through. We were still sailing fast, but speed can definitely take a toll on the boat. That is definitely not right. Uh, the main sheet has exploded off the back of the boom. Looks like the little uh, U attachment on the boom itself has worked its way out. I've now secured the boom with an extra line so I can get this re-rigged on a different spot, but oh, that's not good. I had to kind of uh, backwind the main a bit with the Genoa to try to get this done, so we'll do it quick. Well, that was not a particularly wonderful start to the morning, but at least uh, I waited until the light started coming up so I could see things. I do hate it when things break. I just hate it. Now, I want to, to say for sure that we are not over canvassed right now. The winds are mostly in the zone where we could have full sails up, occasionally jumping up into one reef territory, but we've got one reef in both sails anyways, just out of caution. I think it's just the cumulative stress of over 40 plus thousand miles that we've sailed that just caused that little U-bracket holder thingy, whatever the right term is, it just exploded. So, not good. I did check the other ones that the main sheet is attached to and they look okay. We'll be keeping a very close eye on them, of course. Um, I, I didn't even notice anything in my daily rigging checks, but that's just how it happens sometimes. Everything looks okay until BOOM! It's not okay. So we got, again, lucky that it doesn't look like there was any damage. The sail was okay. I got to it pretty quick. Um, so we're all fixed up. Back on course again. Open. No more of that. We've got some additional information in, and first of all, I want to say a huge thanks to both my sister Julie and my mom, who've been invaluable trying to get all this information for us, send us, send it to us out here at sea. It's very frustrating to only have an Iridium go and try to figure out how the world is changing so fast, but as I understand it, for the U.S., uh, to sail all the way there, the Customs and Border Patrol is the one who's uh, controlling that. My mom has said they won't tell her what the situation is going to be like. Just because it's changing so fast, they don't know. Which is not unexpected. Not unexpected. Uh, true. It's frustrating nonetheless. But um, one person did say that apparently because we're U.S. citizens, we will be let into the country. So I guess that's good. You know, we don't know how long we might be quarantined for, but we would be let in. So uh, that side's so-so. The weather, that was the other thing that we were kind of worried about, and that part's not so good. Uh, right now, it is late March, and the weather doesn't really start turning to be good to go up the East Coast until late April, May, June-ish time is starting when is better, so. Jimmy Cornell says late April to June. Yeah, so if we leave now, then we'd be risking additional storms, wind going against us, and we've come so far with relatively safe sailing, I don't want to I don't want to risk that for the last little bit. So, I don't think the U.S. is a good option for us. Uh, Antigua, we got in contact with a yacht agent who told us that you're still allowed in, but you have to get on a list of expected arrivals by tomorrow. And if you don't get on that list, you can't get in. So, I think, I think Antigua is going to be our best bet. Like, we have some sort of certainty that we'll be able to get in. We can work with a yacht agent who can help kind of interact with the local government and stuff like that so yeah I think I think we need to divert course to, uh, to Antigua. Alright well it's a plan it may be a little disappointing but it is a plan. Yeah I mean yeah, we've been we've been planning this end of our circumnavigation for months and you know we were gonna go to St. Vincent the Grenadines and cruise for a little while and then go up to St. Lucia where we were gonna have friends and family fly in and we can't do that anymore. Uh, St. Lucia's closed, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines are open, but long term, not good to go. Yeah, it's, it's disappointing, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm sure when we look back years from now, we'll remember this, this whole adventure was just awesome, and this last passage, 
just adds to that whole crazy stories we get to tell. But for right now, I am I'm pretty bummed, I'm not gonna lie. It was a big relief to have a plan of action, but with how fast everything was changing, we fully expected we might have to change plans again. All we could do was continue to sail as fast as possible and keep our fingers crossed Antigua would still be open when we got there. We had a very nice sunrise this morning, but unfortunately, that's about the only good thing I can say for this morning so far. We're facing a few conundrums, uh, first and foremost of which is the speed we are sailing at. Uh, we are about 650 miles out of Antigua right now. In order to get there before sunset, about three and a half days from now, we have to average 7.5. Over the last five days, we've been doing pretty well. We've averaged 7.49. Pretty good for Star Horizons. Unfortunately, well, we have apparently found a significant countercurrent running at about a knot to a knot and a half uh, against us. That's going to hurt quite a lot because we don't exactly have a whole lot of margin for error. And the wind has kind of shifted back around to the east behind us a little bit, taking us out of our uh, pure sweet spot for a Star Horizons sailing plan, uh, which has slowed us down as well. I think we'll give it a try for a little while longer today, but if we can't get our speed back up, we're going to slow down on purpose so that we can actually arrive after sunrise about four days from now, which is always a bummer to be doing an extra night, but you now it is what it is. The other thing, I was doing my checks this morning, and I have discovered some chafe in the topping lift and the first reef line, kind of rubbing right next to each other where the topping lift is tied onto the boom. Uh, so that's not so good. Gonna have to work a little bit to get that all fixed up this morning. With the mainsail up, the topping lift isn't needed to take the weight of the boom. That made it a pretty easy job to just untie the topping lift, bring it down, and cut off enough of the line to get rid of the chafe spot. Once that was done, I tied it back on and moved to the more challenging part of the project. The reef line is secured around the boom and requires a bit more maneuvering to get it untied and free. Rather than just cutting off the chafe part of this line, I actually re-rigged the first reef using what was our third reef line. That line came over the outside sheave at the back of the boom, so I figured that would be less likely to chafe for the rest of the passage. When we got up to the Caribbean, I could do a proper swap. How's it going up here, babe? It's fine. Um, we can tell we are getting into the Caribbean because we see a lot of sargassium right now. Which yeah, is it's just, just like everywhere. Reddish brown seaweed, and it it's like in stripes across the water. It's pretty bizarre. Yeah, some, I've even seen it just like large mats, just mats yeah. of things. Yeah, and unfortunately, our hydro generator that we installed back in Cape Town catches the seaweed. <laughs> it's getting very annoying to have to uh, so raise and lower that thing. We're getting pretty good. We're not like fully raising it and lowering it. We're like halfway raising it so that we can clear the seaweed off of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's... Uh, that's, that's, that's what we're doing, huh? Yeah, yeah. that's what's going on. Um, and in one of those amazing coincidences in life, I don't know how this happens, I'm pretty sure that we've got some damn seaweed on there Could now. Could go for some clearing right now, huh? Yeah, why don't, we, uh, yeah. why don't we show everyone how we're doing that? Yeah, right. I'll let you do it, you the badass. <laughs> Safety first, right? Safety first. See mom, safety first. All right, so walk us through what you're doing. All right, so this uh, white and green line is our line to raise the hydro generator. Yeah. And the black and white line is the line to lower the hydro generator. So um, to get it to raise up and flip up to the halfway part, I have to take the 
um, lower line and take it out of the clam cleats and then pretty much just loose it and it'll come up. And I just saw the seaweed come off, so that's good. There we go, victory. So now the hydro generator uh, propeller is like mostly in the water, but sometimes it pops up out of the water. I can see all the blades are moving freely, so that's good. And then to get it to go back down, <laughs> no dying. To, to go back down, I need to take the um, the raising line out of the clam cleat down the bottom, which means I just need to move this line over and pull. And then um, once this one's loose, then I pull this one hard to get the hydrogen all the way up. All right, show us those muscles. All right, you can do this. Yeah, baby, get some. There we go. And then the last step, I just need to put the raising line back in the clam cleats down on the... Ta-da! Wow. Well freaking done. Easy peasy. Until the next 15 minutes when it gets <laughs> clogged up again. Hey, what you working on up there? Hey. Whoa, a little bouncy. I am tweaking the sails. Oh yeah? Yes. Oh, come on up. We, when we adjusted course to go, instead of going to SVG, we're going to Antigua, we added 115 nautical miles onto our trip. And we just were not quite going fast enough for us to get in to Antigua before sunset on the 25th. It was so close. It was really close. But just couldn't quite get there. Nope. And that means that we have had to adjust the sails a little bit more to maintain the appropriate speed to get in after sunrise on the 25th. Is, is that a fancy way of saying we've had to slow down? We've had to slow down. I don't like that sound. I know. Before we get there, we are going to cross our wake and finish our circumnavigation. That is just so wild. Yeah, so our goal is to cross our wake after sunrise on the 26th. We can have a little celebration. Both be awake and end celebrate. of our circumnavigation. Woo! And then we'll get into St. John to clear into Antigua. Keeping our fingers crossed, that still works out for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, keep up the good work, Admiral. Now that is one spectacular sunset. Wow. What do you think, babe? Not too bad, huh? Sunset time! Sunset time. Always has to be at least one on a passage. Yeah, this has definitely been our best sunset in a long time. Oh yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Wow. I, I just keep saying wow because it is that freaking incredible. <laughs> yeah, it is. It will be fair to say this won't go down as my favorite night watch. Uh, when I came up, Amy said, oh, there's squalls around, but we haven't got rained on or hit by one. I think they were just waiting for me. Uh, about 20 minutes after she went down to bed, the rain came, the winds died down to about five knots of true wind speed, and then jumped up to 25 knots of true wind speed. Uh, and of course, you know, clocking all over 50, 60 degrees, 70 degrees around from one direction to another, so lots of sail work needed. And then in the middle of all this, the BMS for our batteries just kind of stopped reading voltage. It has happened before, never been able to really figure out why it happens, just a quirk of electronics, I guess. I do know how to reset everything. So I got the boat into Hove 2, I shut down all of the electronics, I got the um, turn off the house bank in order to do this. So I got that done, reset the BMS, that's all working now. But her AIS won't turn back on. Which is awesome. So, day and a half out of Antigua, into the Caribbean, where we're going to start seeing boats again, and AIS not working. Now that it's light, and Amy is awake, there she is over there. 
uh, which meant I was able to go down and get some tools. I've done a little more looking into our AIS, so I'm going to put the camera back here behind our nav desk and show you what it looks like. Kind of massive jumble of wires, but there's some reason for the madness. This right here, this is the fuse for the AIS. I have checked the continuity of that. It works fine. Uh, 12 volts both sides, so fuse not the problem. This is the back of the AIS there. These are all of the cords. I have done the standard trick of unplugging and replugging. Uh, didn't work. So they're on timeout now. It's been a little while. I think we will try plugging everything in again. And it looks like the timeout worked. I don't know why. You know, electronics. What are you going to do? Right now is a rather good example of just why the last day of a passage always seems to be the most challenging. We are we're smack dab in the northeast trade winds. You'd think the winds had come out of the northeast. And they have for the vast majority of our passage. But not today. The weather forecast did show winds coming out of the a little bit south of east, about 100 degrees true wind direction. We're now seeing winds 150 degrees true wind direction, and they're light as a general rule, which is not helping. So to try to sail as deep as we can, we've got this creature over on the windward bow. We're back to full main, but we're still pointing way too far north. Now, with the winds being so light, going to wing on wing would be very difficult because there's no apparent wind speed advantage. Um, yeah, it's very frustrating. We're, we're like a hundred something miles away from our destination and it's just like we can't get there nearly as easily as it was for the, literally the last seven days where it winds exactly the same direction, same wind speed, and then we get close and they're like, <laughs> nice try, still gonna have to work for it. A nice easy arrival is always my preferred method, but crossing some big milestones helped ease the struggles. Dun, 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 dun. Um, we have something to celebrate right now, don't we? We are making, well, we've made one of our final turns into Antigua. Yeah. And we've just adjusted our sails. We're wing on wing with our main and our Genoa. And we are uh, shooting a little bit north of Antigua. So we're going to go around the top. And then uh, come on in. So. Uh, well, I was I was actually referring to it's time for our last night watch oh. change. Yeah. Of the circumnavigation. The last night watch of my world circumnavigation. Whoa. I'll take it. <laughs> Ready to be done, huh? Ready to be done. All right. Yeah. Well, Admiral, thank you for staying up to help with sail changes. Of course. Go down. Go to sleep. And have a good. Good off watch sleeping time. And be ready to celebrate in the morning. Woohoo! Woo! Well, sometime tomorrow. We'll see how fast we go. Yeah. Winds are light, but we'll make it. We will. It's time for the last sunrise at sea. Not just for this passage, but of our entire circumnavigation. Which is so freaking strange to say. Um, I, I always love sunrises. That's why I do these little segments all the time. But I spent most of my night watch up on the lounge deck last night, just gazing at the stars. And if I'm completely honest, that's my favorite part. I just love being out under the stars. Last night was great, kind of looking back, reminiscing over the last five and a half years of sailing. I mean, God, what a bunch of amazing adventures we've had. It's just been one hell of a good time. Uh, you know, that is for damn sure. And now we're almost to Antigua. So, quick situation update. We're about 20 miles off the coast up in front of us. I uh, can't see the island though because if I turn, we got quite a lot of squalls around us this morning. Uh, it's playing with the wind, of course, but we're, we're close. We can start to see some boats on AIS that are there. Feeling confident we're going to make it in today. Cross our wake, get a chance to do some celebrating. And I sure like the sound of that. As the clouds clear away, we can start to see Antigua. We are so close.
god, it's almost over, guys. We're so freaking close, like just like a hundred couple feet right in front of us. Wow. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I really don't know what to say. This is just... Well, I will tell you that we left Antigua December 31st of 2015, which was 1,547 days ago. You got all the numbers, huh? I got all the numbers. And we've sailed 34,000... 140 nautical miles since then. Yes, yeah, literally that's since we crossed this amazing. point, that's what we calculated. So yeah. that's not from France, but that is the circumnavigation. And oh, we're getting close. <laughs> oh, we're getting so, um, we're getting so freaking close. Just got to cross that blue line. That's what we're looking for. Crossing the blue line. The bow's getting real close. <laughs> it's counting down. The 44 feet difference. We're so <laughs> close. I think I, I'm gonna call it. We're done. <laughs> oh my god, we have just circumnavigated the whole freaking planet. Hey, that you. That is crazy. Thanks for doing that with me. Thank you. Aww. Wow. Guys, it's been amazing. Thank you everyone so much for watching our videos and for following along. Yeah, jeez, I can't freaking believe it. Now, we are, we got just one last turn to get into St. John. We still got to clear in. That could be a little bit tricky since this is still the coronavirus thing, but. We'll get that taken care of, and then... Oh, and then I don't think it'll sink in. <laughs> My goodness. Amy and I had been talking and dreaming about this moment for over 10 years, and I'm still not quite sure it's actually sunk in that we finally accomplished our goal. When we watched Starry Horizons get launched, way back in October 2014, neither of us could have imagined the adventures that awaited the cruising life is filled with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, but at that moment, it was all worth it. I can't believe this moment's finally here. It has been 158 videos, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and checking out our adventure with us and following along. It's been really fun. Yeah, sharing this all with you guys has been fantastic. But I am gonna say that we're gonna take a bit of a break from regular video making. It's just, guys, this is a lot of work and we're so happy to have this whole circumnavigation documented. We're taking a bit of a break from regular video making for a while don't know what the future holds, but I don't want to leave you hanging. So we're obviously not on Starry Horizons right now. We did end up spending a couple of months in Antigua, so it was a good thing we chose a spot to go to where we'd get stuck for a while. Uh, when we got a weather window, we sailed up to Virginia. Starry Horizons is on the hard. We've been back in Texas visiting family. Lots of family Lots time. of family. So uh, we made it out okay. Don't want to leave you hanging with uh, where we ended this video. Yeah. As to our current plans, we don't really have any. Cruising is up in the air right now, so we're just playing it by ear. However, we are working on quite a few things in the background. I'm writing every day. We're still posting on Facebook and on the blog, so make sure you're following those places along to keep up with us. Yeah, and you haven't seen the end of us here on YouTube yet either. <laughs> so make sure you stick around. We'll see y'all again at some point in time. Thanks for watching, y'all. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys.